Okay, we're continuing studying the laws of Lashon Hara, the laws of evil speech, and we are now learning about the positive commandments that one violates by speaking Lashon Hara. And we are on Asay Beis, positive commandment number two. Again, we had 17 negative commandments that someone violates when he speaks Lashon Hara, and now we are um, talking about the positive commandments. V'ayver a'idea sipur hazeh, gam... When somebody speaks uh, evil about one about their fellow, he violates the positive commandment that one should love their neighbor as themselves. We have a mitzvah to love our fellow as ourselves. One has to be careful with his friend's money, just like he would be careful with his own money. One has to speak positively about his friend, just like uh, he would want his uh, he would want someone to speak positively about him, and he has to worry about his friend's honor, just like a person worries about his own honor. Somebody who speaks slander, gossip, or evil speech about his friend, or even the one who listens to it and believes it, even if it's true, it's apparent. That you don't love him at all. If someone, if you go around speaking negatively about your friend, then it's clear that you don't really love your friend. And there's a mitzvah to love your fellow Jew. So if you're speaking Lashon Har about him, it's clear that that does not, that you're not fulfilling that commandment. Now he says, for sure you're not loving him when you speak negatively about him. And all the more so, you're not uh, loving him like yourself. <laughs> right? There's two levels. There's loving somebody and then there's loving some. Uh, somebody like yourself. Let's face it, we all love ourselves very much. The proof for this is, we all know we have faults, right? All, let's, let's, let's be honest, we all know deep down that we have things that are lacking, we have things that are wrong with us, we're all not perfect, right? Any human being that was born after Adam, before he sinned, is not perfect. And we all have faults. And even though we know our faults, we don't want our friends knowing about them. We don't want our friends knowing what's wrong with us. We don't even want our friends knowing about one one thousandth of the things that we have wrong with us. And even if it happens that our friend knows our faults or one of our faults, and how would we feel if a friend of ours who knew something that was wrong with us, knew one of our faults, went and uh, went to go speak negatively about us to somebody else? What will we be doing? We will be praying, oh, please don't let, don't let him listen to, uh, to this negative thing about me. Please don't let him believe it. Don't let him believe it. I don't want him believing it. We will, we, will, we will be diving to Hashem that this person shouldn't believe the negative thing being said about us. And the whole reason is, is that we don't want another person viewing us in a negative light. Even uh, even though we know ourselves that you know uh, we have much more wrong with us than this small thing that was being told to uh, this other person, even though we know that there are uh, we have a lot of things wrong with us, we still don't want our friend to know even the smallest things about us. And we don't want him going to tell somebody else the smallest things that we've done. For sure, if we've committed sins, we don't want our friends to go and tell other people the uh, the sins that we've done. So, so too, we have to be careful that just like we would never want our one, we would never want our friend to know something negative about us. And even if he did, and he went and told somebody else, we would want that person to not believe our friend. And we would, you know, daven, daven that our friend, uh, that this person wouldn't believe um, the negative thing being said about us. So if that's how we feel about ourselves, we have a mitzvah to love our fellow Jew as ourselves. So if so, that's how careful we have to be to not speak Lashon Hara. So when one speaks Lashon Hara, he says something negative about uh, his fellow, he violates this 
um, mitzvah of loving one's friend as himself. They says the the he goes on to talk about a story in the Torah to illustrate this point. Now, just as a he talks about the story of Noah and his son Ham, his son Ham and the, his other sons. Now, any time, just a short introduction. Any time the Torah says something, it's not just coming to tell us a story, meaning that it's not just coming to tell us a historical event that happened. That's not the uh, the point of the Torah. The Torah is not just a history class. The Torah is there. Anything written in the Torah is to teach us a major lesson. So the Torah has a story after the flood happened, the flood where most of where the world was destroyed, all of humanity was destroyed except for Noah and his wife and his children and their wives. So after this happened, Noah goes outside of the ark and he plants a vineyard and he gets drunk and he becomes uncovered. His son Ham was jealous of him. He didn't want his father Noah to have any more children. He was worried. He didn't want to have to compete with any more offspring of Noah. So he went and he uh, castrated Noah. And according to some opinions, he also sodomized him. So when his other sons, Shem and Yephes, saw what Ham had done to Noah, Noah, to Noah, they went and they uncovered, they covered Noah, and they showed um, kindness to their father by covering him up, covering him up after this egregious sin that Ham had done to him. So the Chavetz Chaim brings this, and he says, "This must be a very important reason why this story is in the Torah, right? There's obviously very ma- there's many important reasons, but he's focusing on one important reason." It says, "The gam siper lano Torah es habrach, es habracha." I sorry, skip the line. Shem yosef kisu es erbas avim v'gam siper lano Torah es habracha. Shabirah ham noach v'niskaimu lebasof laharus lano es gedulos hamid hazos shetzarach adam lachapas al ganus chaveru bechol kocho kamo al shal atzmo. He says we see after this story happened, what happened? Ham was cursed, and his descendants were cursed to be slaves to their brothers, and Shem and Yefes who covered their father they merited tremendous blessing. And the Chavetz Chaim says, the reason the story is in the Torah is to demonstrate to, to what degree we have to go to worry about the honor of our fellow. And we have to go with all of our strength and all of our ability to care about our friends, care about our fellow, just like we would care about ourselves. Shame and Yafas were very concerned that their father was disgraced. And they uh, went, and they were very um, vigorous. They were very uh, quick to worry about, to uh, take care of their father's dignity. Um, right. Also, we see that there was a difference between the. I'm just adding this on my own. The Chavetz Chaim doesn't say this, but the way that Shem and Yefes were rewarded was different. Shem had a um, more had a larger reward that his children were merited to have tzitzis, meaning to merit to have the mitzvah of tzitzis that his descendants would be. Uh, the Jewish people, because when he covered his father, he walked backwards when he approached his father so that he wouldn't see his father uh, shamed and naked. Whereas uh, Yefes didn't do that. So they both did a mitzvah, shame and Yefes, uh, but shame did the mitzvah in a, uh, a more honorable way. And he, for that reason, got a bigger reward and a bigger bracha than Yefes did. So while they both did a mitzvah, since shame did a bigger mitzvah, he got a bigger uh, reward. And we see the Chavetz Chaim is bringing this story to show how careful we have to be when we are to honor others and to be careful and uh, nizer in, um, with all of our strength and uh, the honor and the covet of others. And you see the tremendous bracha that they got. Okay, so that was the second positive mitzvah that one violates when speaking Lashon Hara. Is one is clearly not loving his neighbor as himself if he does not... Um, if he does not... Uh, if he is speaking Lashon Hara about him. Okay, number three. One who speaks Lashon Hara, speaks evil about another, violates the positive commandment to judge um, one's fellow favorably. What does this mean? You see your friend do something. And you're not sure what he did. He did something that was a 50-50. You, he either did something good or did something bad. You're not sure. So there's a mitzvah. Even if he's a regular person. So you see somebody do something. You're not sure if he did a sin. Or you're not sure if he did a mitzvah. Uh, it's like ambiguous. There's a mitzvah to judge him positively. You have to look at 
you have to look at him that he is really doing the right thing. Uh, when there's an option, if he's doing something good or doing something bad. And this is a, a mitzvah that doesn't just apply to Lashon Hara. Anytime you see somebody do something, right? And it's a very hard mitzvah. Often we see, uh, we see somebody who uh, does something and we automatically think, oh, he's up to no good. You know, but uh, there's a mitzvah to judge him favorably. Somebody once told me that uh, he spoke to uh, a woman whose son was in jail for murder. And the mother, the way she talked about her son was, uh, oh, he's, uh, yeah, he's really a nice guy. He just, you know, he, he's, a very, he's a person who fights for justice. And he saw somebody being taken advantage of, so he stabbed him because he just, you know, he's a very just person. And this person who spoke to this uh, woman told me that he saw from that how, you know, the way a mother speaks about her child we can learn how to judge someone favorably, right? A, a mother never finds anything wrong with what her child does you know, when she's talking to other people. So that should teach us how it's possible, if we want to, to judge someone favorably. When we have a good eye, we can judge people in a positive, in a positive way. When we see people do sins, you know, we uh, automatically say, oh, what a wicked person, he's doing this sin. Well, you know, you don't know what he was struggling with. Maybe he had a tremendous Sahara that we didn't have. Or he had something pushing him to do this. And obviously, I want to make it clear, we're not condoning what the person did. But, you know, only Hashem can judge people. Um, you know, only Hashem can judge people on, you know, what they were doing. And uh, it's not up for us to judge. But we should be judging people favorably. So here, we're not, that was when someone did a sin. Here, we're not talking about when someone actually uh, did a sin. We're just saying, if he's 50-50, you should judge him favorably. I, I had a personal thing that happened to me. I know a guy... Uh, once he uh, smelled really bad and uh, you know I, I was just like getting upset because you know why couldn't he just take a shower or you know why didn't he you know do something to not make himself smell so bad and later on in an unrelated conversation he mentioned me, to me that he's allergic to soap you know so you know who would have thought in a million years that somebody is allergic to soap but this guy said he couldn't use soap because he breaks out in a rash every time so just to think you know, there's always a million reasons why somebody's doing something which appears to be, uh, you know, wrong. And all the more so if somebody's doing something, you know, you know, someone, uh, you know, he takes a, let's say you see somebody take a package off somebody's uh, doorstep. So you could think he's stealing the package or you could think he's just, uh, you know, someone called him and he said, oh, can you pick up the package for me at the doorstep? So don't automatically assume that he's going to steal it. You know, you could assume that, um you know, he's trying to help the person. Obviously, if he's wearing, like, a ski mask and has, like, a gun or something, then you could probably maybe assume a little bit. But now, that was talking about a person who's 50-50, right? He's, he's like an average, average guy. So an average guy, when you're not sure what he's doing, you judge him favorably. If the person that does something, and he's someone who fears God, so someone who's a righteous person, we know that he's a righteous person, he's a Torah scholar, he fears God, and you see him doing something which looks to be bad, even in that situation you should judge the Torah scholar favorably. Right? We don't know what's going on, we don't know all the details, very rarely with anything do we know all the details, and there's a mitzvah to judge that person favorably. And just as an aside, you know, from reading the, uh, you know, from reading the news and just about different stories and situations that I knew about personally, and when you read the news and you see how the news misrepresents things and leaves out details, right? Nobody always has all the details. So it was just a lesson to me that when you see something in life, you're only seeing a very small aspect of what's going on. We really don't know the whole story. So there's a mitzvah to judge someone favorably. Okay, now, so now, let's say we see somebody who's doing something, we're not sure, again, is it good or is it bad, and we go to tell a friend about it, and we tell it to him that he was doing something wrong. So not only did we violate the mitzvah of not speaking Lashon Har, but we violated the mitzvah of having to speak about somebody favorably. Okay, the next mitzvah, that was number three. Now, number four. Now, let's say you spoke negatively about somebody, and through that he lost his job. Let's say you spoke about somebody that he's not a trustworthy fellow. Or he's a car mechanic, and you say he's a thief, he doesn't do a good job, the car, the car broke. Now, 
Shimcha v'litin lo matana. There's a mitzvah to help another Jew when it comes to his parnasa to give him a gift or 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 a convert or somebody who dwells with us uh, in Eretz Yisrael. There's a mitzvah to give him a gift, o halva, or to loan him money, o lasosim o shutvus, or to make a partnership with him, o lahamtsi lo malacha kadeshi ischazik bezev v'lo yipol v'itzdarich l'brios. There's a mitzvah to help somebody to um to have a livelihood so that he shouldn't need charity. So obviously, if we're commanded to help somebody have a, a livelihood and to help him out, all the more so there is a commandment to, uh, we shouldn't be damaging someone's parnasa. Right? That's why, um, you know, websites that have you know, great businesses, it's very dangerous. You know, let, let's say you uh, go to a new restaurant and you had a bad service, you know, and you write about it on the internet. So, you know, first of all, it could be, let's say, let's say it really was bad service. So you go on the internet and you say that this restaurant had bad service. You put it on Google reviews or you put it on the local Facebook group. And then people start talking about, oh, there's such bad service, you know, in this, uh, in this restaurant. So now this person who owns this restaurant, who sank in hundreds of thousands of dollars, perhaps millions of dollars to open up a restaurant. Now, because of your negative review, word gets around and he loses his livelihood and he's going to go have to go on welfare and get charity, you know. So even if it's true that the service was bad, you know, you shouldn't be putting it on the internet because you're going to damage the livelihood, you know, and the effects that could come out of that are very, very um, detrimental. And obviously it's all, it's all the more so it's, is it worse if, you, if you're lying, right? That's for sure bad lying. But even if let's say maybe it was one waiter who had a bad day and uh, therefore this waiter, he uh, said, you know, he, he, he wasn't uh, so quick to get you your food, but really there is good service. So now you put that the restaurant has bad service, and really it has good service. And uh, that's very, very detrimental and very damaging to not only this person's parnasa, but to this neshama of the person who spoke this Lashon Hara. Now, also just thinking uh, on it as an aside point, if uh, you know anyone has the ability, you know, we're just learning here, there's a mitzvah to help those in need and to help them have a job. And there's a lot of people now that are out of work because of coronavirus. And if anyone has the means to help those you know, who are, um, who, who uh, can support others who are, you know, can't go to their job or people have been fired, I know about, please uh, contact me. If you have the ability to help other people, and I'd be more than happy, help, more than happy to, uh, to, to try to distribute funds or to get somebody a job, or if anyone has any resources, please contact me because we need to help those that are in need, especially now. Okay, so we just learned a few positive mitzvahs that apply when one speaks Lashon Hara, and God willing, either tomorrow or Wednesday, we will continue with the uh, rest of the mitzvahs are saying, the positive commandments. So tomorrow, I'm not sure. Tomorrow there's a Parsha class. Probably give it around the same time or maybe a little later. And uh, so we'll either do this and the Parsha class or just the Parsha class. And thank you to everyone who's listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to type. And soon I'm going to post a better quality video.